I'd like to explain the difference between the two different forms of B3. We have niacin and we have niacinamide. The two big differences are this. Niacin will give you the flush, okay? That flushing response, that vasodilation response. But niacinamide won't. So it's a non-flush effect of B3. The other important distinction is with niacin, you get all the lipid benefits, okay? So you have all these great benefits with um, lowering cholesterol, lowering LDL, increasing HDL, decreasing inflammation inside the artery, whereas niacinamide does not have those benefits. So if you're trying to lower your cholesterol, niacin is the one you want to use. Now, both of these vitamins chemically work in a similar way, especially in turning food into energy. Now, niacin is really effective for fatty liver, not just the fatty liver, but a liver that's inflamed, uh, a liver that is developing scar tissue, like in cirrhosis. And so niacin is a really good to remove fat from your liver. Now, what's interesting about this B3, both niacin and niacinamide is the amount of research that is done on this compound. I mean, it's like, it's mind blowing. And to me, I'm just curious, like, why would they do all this research on something that's like a, a vitamin? It's so cheap when that competes for certain drugs. I mean, they found niacin to be a standalone effective remedy for managing your cholesterol. And doctors used to use uh, niacin before statins came on stage. But if you dig a little bit further, you're going to see um, quite a few articles and uh, internet links to the dangers of niacin. So I want to talk about that. You know, it's a lot of discouragement from using niacin because it could be dangerous to your liver, can create liver toxicity. And if you actually read some of these articles, you would never take niacin. Well, if you dig a little further, you're going to find out that it's rare. It's usually involved with a certain percent of the population, like 20% of the population that is taking very high doses over a long period of time and time release niacin. It's actually not as common as you might think. I mean, when you think about even watching a commercial, a drug commercial in the US, I mean, <laughs> may cause projectile vomiting, uh, suicide. It might put you in coma and you might die. I mean, think about the side effects from medication. And then you compare that to some rare side effect from a vitamin. It just does not compare. I mean, do you know any medication that doesn't produce side effects very commonly? Now, there is one article I want to bring up just right now um, related to niacin increasing your liver enzymes, right? Which again is rare. But one doctor had an interesting um, commentary on that, that point. Because when you start to increase niacin, and you start to increase this cofactor of making energy, uh, not just in your liver, but in all the organs, apparently there's gonna be more demand for liver enzymes to make that happen. So one potential possible reason for an increase in liver enzymes is just that you're converting more energy and giving more energy to the rest of the body. So now that I got that out of the way, let's talk about some other benefits. Uh, niacin, apparently it has been effective for schizophrenia. Now, there is some data related to certain genetic variations or problems, which can put someone at risk for having schizophrenia. And apparently this gene, which is N-A-P-R-T-1, is the enzyme for making niacin. Interesting coincidence. So if any of you know anyone with schizophrenia, definitely have them watch this video. And there's also another uh, condition that I want to bring up called drug-induced dyskinesia which is a condition where you're having these involuntary abnormal movements of your body. And there's some great research on adding niacin and manganese for that condition. So if you have dyskinesia, you may want to use those two things. So now let's shift over to niacinamide, talk a little bit more about that. What other conditions has this been shown to be effective in? Well, number one, acne, dermatitis, rosacea, and even psoriasis, both taking it in capsule form as well as in a cream. There's a lot of things that it can help you with that I'm not gonna get into, but basically it'll lower your histamines. It will reduce uh, certain immune inflammatory factors. It'll help decrease the flaking or the plaques on your skin. 
And for acne, it can actually help decrease sebum, which is the oil in the sebaceous gland, which is inflamed. Niacinamide has also been effective for arthritis. It's used a lot with certain uh, facial creams for preventing aging and hyperpigmentation. Niacinamide is also good for the person who has a temper. Uh, you can give it to your kids that have, have a temper tantrum and it'll just chill them out. It's good for anxiety, okay? And so is B1, but B3 is also good. As I was reading the side effect from niacin, you know, I was just thinking, what if you became deficient in B3? What would be the side effects of that, right? People don't talk about that. That's called pellagra. That is a serious condition where you have diarrhea, you have depression, uh, you could die, you can get dementia and develop a, a really serious skin disorder. But you can develop a, a B3 deficiency by drinking a lot of alcohol, by consuming a lot of refined foods, especially corn. Apparently, corn tends to bind up uh, tryptophan, which is an amino acid that turns into niacin. And so the early Indians, when they used to um, use maize or corn in their food, they had a technique. They would soak it in lime, and that would alkalize this corn meal, and that would free up the niacin that was necessary to prevent pellagra. But of course, nowadays we don't do that, right? We just grind up the corn and we just eat it in corn chips and all sorts of foods. But if you're living on a diet just of corn, chances are you probably are going to develop uh, pellagra. In summary, niacin gives you the flesh. Niacinamide won't give you the flesh. Niacin is really good for cholesterol, all aspects of cholesterol, your lipids and a fatty liver, it's good for all that. It's also good for schizophrenia, dyskinesia. And then niacinamide is really good for um, everything related to the skin and inflammation and arthritis and anxiety. Now, since we touched on these lipids and cholesterol, I did an exclusive video on the relationship between taking niacin and what it can do for your cholesterol in more detail. You should check that out. I put it up right here.